Hello there, welcome back to the Yellow Turbans Abridged. Last time we were annihilating Kong Rong, but had to call that part of the campaign off because we were once again at war all over the place with the Yuan Shu, Lu Bu, Gong Lang Shu, messy coalition thing. We started off by annihilating some forces belonging to Lu Bu and going after a settlement we discovered that he owns, and in the south we finally took the Chengdu farmlands, evening out our border. Now we're going to attack that settlement we found, going over the walls. I'm going to be using the live footage for this one because the replay was really long and I couldn't be bothered to sit through it. You'll see this is a quite long and arduous technical kind of battle because I wanted to really minimise casualties with the expectation that another fight might be about to happen. We started off by setting enemy towers and gatehouses on fire and curiously at the other end of town from where I was attacking, other stuff was just on fire of its own volition. I think this might be the result of the siege escalation mechanic where because we had them under siege for two turns stuff's just on fire when we arrive and that's especially good because the more buildings get damaged the more the enemy settlement damage morale penalty increases not quite sure how big it is but in Attila at least you could absolutely ruin enemy armies by just burning down random buildings in the towns so after a while those fires go out but we've still got plenty of hot action to look at because I'm doing this Trying to draw out all of the enemy's arrows by forcing them to shoot my ram and my guys with shields. That goes on for some time. I didn't actually get all of the arrows because not all of their guys were up on the wall and I got bored after a while. Eventually, it just comes down to my own archers. We can bring them in to shoot enemy archers and finish them off. And then if we've got archers or arrows sorry, left over, we can hit other random units just to soften things up before we go in. Here was one particularly good case. I discovered if you open a gate with a ram, you can then shoot right through the gate at the units the AI is using to defend it. So this would be very, very effective if that wasn't our last volley. We killed a few of those militia. If we had a couple more volleys, we probably could have just taken them out and gone in for free. Anyway, the enemy are looking pretty weak. They don't have many men defending the entrances. One entrance is a breach in the wall, also created by the siege escalation. Eventually, we're going in. I ordered the men to go through and attack, and you can see it's really just one or two units, mostly half dead, defending on the other side, and our guys are all fresh, having not really done anything so far in the fight. So, just a case of storming in. Would be good if there was a bonus against cavalry for our heavy spears here. They're defending with static cav, and they're going to last a while just because the uh, stats aren't that unequal, but eventually. We're in. With sheer numbers, we can push our way through and start just taking out units, especially when all of our cav get into the town. Then we can circle around, kill the last remaining archers and stuff like that, and capture towers as well. The only enemy units that were safe were those that actually stayed up on the wall. A few of them never abandoned the walls even after we got in. Perhaps the right decision because they did avoid getting into some real mess. Jiang Kai made it all the way to the centre of town where these axe troops are in huge trouble. They're explicitly weak against Cav and they just die instantly. There are some spears there as well, but they were walking backwards and forwards, so no bonus against Cav for them. Plus, it's a night battle and their army's half dead, their settlement's on fire, their morale is pretty low, so they just rout even though I wasn't even trying to fight them. And that's going to bring an end to the battle. I almost captured the town, but I think everything chain route just before I got the technical victory on victory points. There we have it, and it was a decisive victory, which means you know something good happened, because even though we used up all our ammo, it didn't end up being a close victory. The enemy force is totally dead, since it was a siege attack, so even the surviving units at the end get deleted. And more importantly, we now have this walled settlement for ourselves on the front line. Very nice. No message saying that Lu Bu has been defeated as a faction, and still no sign of Lu Bu himself. And this is what I was worried about. Figured we might have to actually hole up here and face some other army coming from somewhere to get revenge. In the meantime, the few troops that Lu Bu had nearby lay siege to that city. That's really annoying because now we can't replenish and because we don't have the option to sally until attrition has happened, we're going to lose a whole load of men because of that. First though, the situation I wanted to get going here in the capital has finally arisen. You might remember I was hiding my men outside of the city to see if the enemy would do a siege attack and now they have. Both sides have a full stack coming in as reinforcements. We have almost a full stack of men inside as well, ready to defend against their initial attack. Our archers here are mostly a mixed ranged melee unit. Perfect for defending walls since we'll shoot the enemy as they come in, then fight them in melee once they arrive. Their reinforcements came on behind where they deployed, so that's nice and easy to keep track of, although they're not going to come in and attack where they deployed actually, as we'll see. 
For now, we're just shooting the enemy as they advance. They do have archers, so they'll be shooting back at us, but we've seen before in this campaign that archers shooting targets on walls doesn't really do very much. The walls are very chunky, they provide real good cover for the men who are garrisoned there, so our own archers will be fine, the enemy are just wasting arrows. At the other end of the map is our reinforcement army making its way in. These reinforcements though proved to be very tricky, they were very unwilling to do what I wanted them to do. For example, you can see the army split up into three groups to go through three different gates, all then to arrive at just about the same position, so that's going to stagger our reinforcements arriving effectively and it's actually going to get a bit worse as time goes on. Many of the enemy's initial units have reached our wall and up they come. By the way, it was just after this battle that I recorded the commentary in one of the previous parts where I claimed that towers have been nerfed because the game had just been updated before I played this and in this battle the towers weren't really having much effect on the enemy, I didn't notice the towers killing very much stuff at all, we'll see another example of that later where they were very much below expectations, but yes they haven't actually been nerfed as we'll see later in this campaign. Anyway, the fights are breaking out on the wall and now we just have to cross our fingers really, there's nothing we can do per se, our men just need to somehow beat the enemy. I don't think the enemy get any actual penalty for climbing over the wall and fighting like that, so there's nothing much we can rely on. I did try one tactic here, and that was sending some heavy spears out of the gate to attack an enemy general as he came in. And I do suspect that the meta in Three Kingdoms is probably the same as the meta in Warhammer, where really you want to put all of your men outside the city, slightly controversially, in order to hold the enemy off because that will allow the towers to fire at enemies. Towers can't fire sideways when they're on the wall. Interestingly, the enemy's reinforcements are mostly going around to attack the other sides of the city, which is pretty good from the enemy. They're not just all piling into the same point. Well, I say pretty good, there is some argument for doing that as well. It's different at least, it's not what I expected. Where the enemy's initial units are being defeated, we're having a few issues because some of my men climbed down the enemy's ropes to be outside the town and then are getting attacked by the next wave of enemies as they try to go back up. I believe I put the entire army on guard mode, so I guess that's why they're automatically climbing back up again after they go down, but yes, it's a little bit inconvenient for my troops I expect. You can see the enemy have dismounted all of their officers and are bringing them up onto the walls, that's pretty good, they're going to lose their main advantage in that they were heavy cavalry and now they can't use them as them. At the same time, their reinforcement units are starting to get real cheeky, some of them have gone all the way to the back of the town and are now climbing in places where I can't stop them getting up on the walls, and this was the time when I was really convinced something must be going on with the towers. Because these cavalry units have been walking past my towers, going around the town, and many of them, like this one here, are just standing in range of multiple towers, and they're not being wiped out, which is what we saw previously. In previous battles we've seen towers get a hit with every shot on cavalry units and just wipe them out. It may be the case that towers mounted on walls are different to the standalone towers you get in smaller settlements, that might be what's going on here. But yes, that's why I figured towers must have been nerfed, because people were constantly complaining about them being overpowered as well, so I did expect a nerf to be coming. You can see here plenty of the enemy's reinforcement infantry are now up on the walls and are starting to gain some presence. My men don't want anything to do with this, I guess again because they're on guard mode, they're not being drawn into the fight, so a lot of them just ignore the fighting going on until it's really impacting them. Hopefully that doesn't reduce our stats in any way. Here's another weird thing that happened, some of my troops formed a single file line down off the wall. I think they might have been pursuing a unit that's gone down there or something, or maybe they were pushed off, not quite sure what happened. But that was just fun, this video is becoming a glitch showcase basically, because the battle itself is just loads of pockets of fighting where I can't really influence what's going on until my reinforcements eventually show up, that is. They are gradually getting here, however, they're very slow compared to the enemy's reinforcements because they are glitching out unfortunately. Many units just stopped randomly like these archers and others experience an issue that goes all the way back to good old Empire Total War where units can kind of fracture and guys just walk off in different directions and this means the unit can't really move and everything just goes out the window. So here we see a whole bunch of guys that are just kind of here. Eventually if you keep spamming orders you can reverse this so I did get my men into the town but much later than the enemy got their men into the town, so they weren't there in time to really defend properly. A different unit's taken over single file duty over here on the eastern wall. Again the fighting's just 
our garrison units versus theirs. It doesn't even matter if we lose our men, so just going to leave them to it and hope the enemy eventually get bored and go away. Their reinforcement army has really pushed in over on the north wall, but with my reinforcement army now arriving, we can meet them, and in many cases we're fighting below towers. So it really is just a case of waiting and hoping we'll eventually win. Slowly but surely the enemy officers are being cut down. They've been fighting for a long time, but because they have high stats, we can't really kill them, especially with our archers fighting in melee, so they're getting away with it. But in some cases, we're starting to see routes, and as the officers route, that's going to start routing foot units as well. Here was one interesting case where I noticed there's a whole bunch of our bodies in front of a squad of enemy crossbows. I think what happened is my men were just standing there getting shot in the face by those crossbowmen, because again, that's probably guard mode. They were pursuing the crossbowmen, the crossbowmen moved away, and our guys just stopped and then got shot by them. Here's the eventual result, a close victory, everything just chain rounded after a while with no other particular developments. And there we have it, the capital has been successfully defended. The walled siege defences are kind of similar to Warhammer in that they're not hugely different to field battles because the wall doesn't present much of a penalty to the attacking side. You can just go over it and there's no debuff for fighting on the wall or climbing up walls or anything like that. So yes, it wasn't as spectacular or interesting as I expected, but it has achieved the result I wanted. The enemy armies have been stopped, and we captured a whole load of officers, who I'm just going to execute as we saw there. My mouse was already over the execute button after the first one, Wei Yan, who definitely needed to be executed. So easy enough to just take them all. As for the captives we've got, we didn't lose that many men, so I'm not even going to bother recruiting them like I normally do. We'll take the extra money let the captives go, and we should have enough men to sally out and counterattack right now to try and finish the enemy off. These armies are sitting in march stance, so I thought this would be extra easy, but this is another thing people complain about, or I see people complaining about in comments and on Discord, the fact that armies that are on march stance can still retreat from battle. In previous games, it would just do an ambush battle instead, if you actually caught up to a marching army. In this case, they can run away, and they've run away in such a way that all of their groups are together and it's actually a hard ask to go in here and kill them all or it would be if we couldn't slap on good old night attack it doesn't update the balance bar but in reality we then had a big advantage we can easily beat each of the armies individually so by forcing individual fights using night attack we can get around the potential chore that that would have been had the chance to promote an officer here and I actually didn't do it. This is based so far on paranoia. Someone was saying that officers, even ones you don't use, still have to be paid just to be in your court. So I started not taking officers. I'm not completely convinced that is the case having looked at the numbers, but I'm willing to believe random hearsay, so let's just go with that. Anyway, we kill a second army right there with a nice order to resolve. That third army is too far away. But overall, that's pretty good. Yuan Shu's just taking a massive beating and lost a whole load more officers. His court must be looking pretty empty. We need to sally out and take down the few Lubu troops who are besieging Gongdu. That's just an order to resolve, but you can see his army is half dead because it suffered attrition due to that annoying AI thing I've mentioned before. But look at this. Apparently, that destroyed Lubu's faction. Who knows what happened to Lobu himself, I guess he was still alive but hadn't got any troops together. So he is now dead, I guess he disappears because his faction's gone. That's very good news indeed, at last the long vendetta is over, the pursuit has been successfully completed. We're still at war in this area because we're at war with Zhang Yang, Yuan Shu's vassal, but that's made things potentially safer. It was at this stage in the campaign that I decided to go against the game's advice of playing on very hard and go down to hard. It's on hard normal right now. I used to be a very hard, very hard kind of guy, but I've very much gone off that. Hard normal, in my opinion, is the superior patrician's choice for difficulty because the AI doesn't cheat very much and it doesn't cheat at all in battles. So you get into difficult situations, but you can always fairly get out of them using normal gameplay. You don't have to rely on exploits all that much. So that's what I like about it, and I recommend it. 
Now then, a new war is on the horizon because the Duchy of Wu, Sun Jian, just declared war on us. He's got a couple of vassals who he's brought in as well. So now look at this border. We're at war everywhere except that tiny bit at the top with Kong Rong. And we know he hates us, so we could be at war at any second. This is not looking good, especially with our armies concentrated at the very bottom and very top. We could be in trouble. Something has to give here. So what I'm going to do is pursue some peace with Yuan Shu. He just suffered a whole bunch of losses to us recently, so we know he might be willing to get peace. He's not right now, so I had to do more. And one thing I could do is go after the remaining army near the capital. In this case, we're just going to auto-resolve. It's one of these things where you have to get used to the idea that even if you have a Pyrrhic victory predicted, you won't lose any units, and if you don't lose any units, then you haven't lost anything. So it is absolutely fine in this game to just take the sliver of victory in the auto resolve and then just wait two turns and you'll be fine again. You don't lose experience like you did in some of the previous games. It's all absolutely fine as long as you're not about to fight someone else immediately which is the case here. So we absolutely annihilate all of Yuan Shu's troops, and with this I only have to bribe him a little bit to convince him to go for peace. Have to give him some random stuff and some food. Giving food I think is always a good idea, because then the enemy, if they break the peace deal, they actually lose something as well. They lose the food shipments you were giving them, so it gives the AI a bit of incentive to actually keep to the peace deal. There we have it then, Yuan Shu is out and he takes Gong Lang Shu out with him. That ends the situation with Huang Zhong, which I haven't talked about in this episode yet. He was setting up for a siege there, but basically that's over. And Xu He is going to take our other main force down south for this new war against Sun Jian and his vassals in the area where we've colonized bits but haven't really built anything. While we wait for that to get started, here's a bit of an aside. You might remember I had a few guys going up to the very top left to conquer a bit of Han Empire territory and they've finally done it after many episodes and it was no effort whatsoever. There was no garrison so we just walked on in and that's that. Now it's just Kong Rong stopping us from having the northern border of the map under our control for some added flank protection. Now Sun Jian begins his attack before my main force arrives so that's unfortunate. But it's not the biggest attack, he has not even brought a full army here. It's just him and his son Sun Se with a bunch of units. I do have Fan Yao hanging around here, the guy who colonized this area originally. And I realize we can almost get numerical parity. If we sit in this tea house, the garrison adds another officer's worth of troops. So that's something. The thing is, it's not that much because they're all low quality peasantry troops. And indeed, Sun Jian does just attack us here, and the balance bar is in his favour, even with the numbers being somewhat equal. So, not ideal. However, there is still some stuff we can do here. We can go for some exploit strategies to try and overcome the enemy's advantages. I'm using the live footage again for this one, for a reason that doesn't become clear or in any way appreciable until after the fight, so just bear with me for a second. Here's the exploit. I had a feeling this would work, and it worked even better than I thought it would. I had these nine guys who I deployed behind the enemy position, and they sent most of their army to go and attack those nine guys. So Sun Tzu is going to take a bunch of troops over there to just do nothing following the nine guys around the map for a while. Meanwhile, Sun Jian's men come and attack our position, not even together. They're attacking one unit at a time. This is the absolutely ideal situation. The only thing holding us back from wiping them out here is the fact that them being in Sun Jian's army gives them all kinds of stat boosts. I don't have the stats thing open right here so you can't see, but they're heavily boosted. They're about 50% up on most of their stats as the battle starts. So even though we hit the enemy with arrows and with cavalry charges, it doesn't do all that much. We do have luck when more units arrive because some of the enemy's cav charged right into the front of our spears. We hit them with the charge reflection and those cav units just went away instantly, so that's all good stuff. Plus we're showering Sun Jian himself with arrows. He is a tank, so I guess he's taking it, but he's also losing men slowly but surely, so that's going to help. We are going to have issues with the enemy's swords. He's got Jan sword guards, funnily enough, and they're not only better than our troops already, but with the buffs from being near Sun Jian as well, they're going to be very hard to kill, near impossible in fact, so we're going to have some trouble there. What I wanted to do was rear attack them with my cav here because they are explicitly weak against cav and we have seen them just die instantly to cavalry charges, but Sun Jian moving about interrupted me there so I didn't get the charge off properly. Then, while setting up for the counter charge, 
Watch my mouse carefully. Sun Jian is riding away from my spears who were chasing him. I saw him turn back and I moved to hit the halt key. If I hadn't misclicked and not actually hit the button, then my spears would have counted as not moving and Sun Jian would have died by running into them. Instead, it's the reverse. His charge applies to me and our spear unit is instantly routed. So that was some real, real close micro. A bit of a mess up from me. There is a hotkey, I think. It might be backspace for doing halt, but I wasn't thinking of that in the moment, clearly. So now we're down on men, but Sun Jian is nearly dead, you can see. He's been fighting with various units and various spearmen and is on the verge of going, so that's promising. As for our commander, Fan Yao, I sent him out to stop enemy archers approaching, but this really didn't work like I thought it would. He's a healer class, so he's not very good at fighting, and he does actually get taken down by the archers, doesn't have the usual cav tanking arrows thing going on. So he's gone out there, and the other cav is sent to support him are also getting absolutely annihilated by the archers. However, it's them or something else, someone has to get annihilated by the archers, so they're just going to absorb all the arrows and die for us. I'm really focusing on chasing down Sun Jian. You can see the main fight against the enemy Gen sword guards is going sort of okay. We're losing men very quickly, but the enemy are gradually dying as well, and because of my earlier exploit, the enemy can't follow up on anything, so we're going to quote unquote win that fight eventually. And here you can see we've got Cav and Spearman locking down Sun Jian, who's nearly dead. He's unbreakable as well, so he's not going to run away. We can definitely fight him to the very end. It's just him alive right now, in fact. We see him there getting surrounded by my spearmen. That's good stuff. I'm going to order the cab out of that fight to try and attack the nearby archers, who I've locked down with my own archers. A fight we'll probably lose, because my archers are only peasants for the most part. And then the next time we see that fight, out of the corner of my eye there, Sun Jan is dead. And about the same time, we see some routes going on. Some of the Jan sword guards get out of there, although they did fight down to the last like couple of guys, because their morale is still really buffed. So that's good, we're starting to win this initial part of the fight. Sun Jian's retinue is being taken out, and there, with a bit of a calf charge, we finally finish off the archers. And that is that, and just in time, because Sun Tzu and his troops are now starting to arrive. We form up to receive them, but as you can see from the balance bar, we're still at a fundamental disadvantage. The enemy troops may not quite be more numerous than us right now, but they're certainly better and they haven't been beaten down, so they're not on low morale. We're going to be in trouble, but at least it's only Sabre Militia attacking us right now. In theory, I can take them out by just rear attacking with my cav, and I try that, but it just doesn't kill very many. My guys are exhausted, the enemies also have buffed stats from being in Sun Tzu's retinue, it's just not happening. You can see I've got the stats open now. I was trying to monitor whether their morale was anywhere near breaking point, and we just couldn't quite get there. So that fight goes on. Meanwhile, Sun Tzu is just standing there. I positioned these spears to stop him rear attacking my troops, and he just stood there staring at them for a while. This was pretty good. I thought maybe he's scared of charge reflection. I thought what I'll do is I'll make my formation more straight so he can't go through the gap in between our units. He attacked, I hit halt to try and get the reflection, but our men had all turned to the side so it doesn't count and our men are annihilated. But overall, that's some pretty good AI, I must say. He just stood there until my men were technically not facing him and then he attacked. The AI was paying very close attention, some actual micro. So I was impressed by that and surprised by it, although it does mean we're in enormous trouble because Sun Tzu is one of the legendary characters, he's super powerful, he can easily just rampage through the rest of my army, and long story short, not even that long a story, he does, he just kills everything, and that's a valiant defeat. However, now we get to why I was really annoyed about this battle and refused to film the replay in protest. After the fight, Sun Jan is not only still alive somehow, he's still in the army, still leading it, and all of his men have been restored to him. This isn't a case of they were wounded and they went away for a while, it's just as if we didn't do anything. This is a new high, or a new low you could say, to killing enemies just not meaning anything in the game, and taking losses in general just being forgiven for free. I was so annoyed by this mechanical discovery and development that I rage quit the campaign, and that's why I don't have the replay. However, I did eventually come back to take my revenge, so we'll see that next time.